All right, to remove the panel, there's not much of a gap, so we gotta put a little, I like to use a little box cutter. Just stick that blade down in that gap and then provide a little bit more room and then you can slide a screwdriver and ideally pop out the back corner first because of the direction of those tabs. Once you, back, once you pop up the back, you can use your fingers to release the other half. And once you have the two backs, the front comes out pretty easily. And that's it. You'll notice the direction of these tabs, pulling the back ones out first. If you pull the front ones out, it's, uh, there's a lip along the top here that gets caught. So you want to pull out the back and then pull out the front. That's up. To remove the speaker, there's two bolts. I've got a socket on the end of a flexible drive, but you can use a ratchet uh, if that's easier. One screw. And the second screw. And then this speaker will just lift out. And factory connection, connection just remove that. All right, this is the factory speaker. Uh, there's a molded piece of plastic that has the two pin connector and a capacitor to filter out uh, the lower frequencies and it feeds into the voice coil here. Uh, to retain the factory wiring, we're gonna cut this, cut this piece of plastic off so we can reuse it on the new speakers. I'm just gonna use a hacksaw and come down vertically along the magnet. That way, and horizontally along the frame. And we have that piece. Okay, so we've removed the factory connector off of both speakers. Uh, I pulled out my soldering iron, removed one of the capacitors. Uh, the capacitor is a 100 microfarad capacitor. Um, originally, I was thinking of just reusing the same fixture and connecting this to the new speaker. Unfortunately, 100 microfarads on a four ohm speaker uh, gives us a base cutoff closer to four or 500 hertz. Uh, and that's gonna cut off too much base. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna short out these two pens. Um, you can leave the capacitor in or you can remove it, but short those two pens. That will allow the factory connector to flow directly to these two pens. And what we're gonna do is, um, I just purchased off the shelf from Crutchfield uh, a base blocker. Uh, this one's rated for 150 hertz. So it's probably closer to like a uh, 200 to 300 microfarad capacitor. So if you wanted to find a um, higher capacitance uh, capacitor and replace it, you could do that. I'm gonna skip that and I'm just gonna solder this up um, to my Alpine four inch. And we will put that together right now. Okay, as you can see, I have soldered the wires from the base blocker onto this factory fitting. The black wire, the negative, goes to the end where the connection uh, opening is. And the white wire, the positive, is on the end where I have shorted out the capacitor. I've actually removed the capacitor. You don't have to remove it. Uh, the key thing is just to uh, short those two terminals with this uh, piece of wire. And uh, so all frequencies can flow through there. And then we are just filtering out using this base blocker. I chose 150 Hertz base blocker from Crutchfield. And since I had the soldering iron out anyway, I soldered the wires directly to the speaker terminals. All right, with these Alpine speakers, they are deeper and have four flanges instead of two uh, than the factory speaker. So to make it a little bit easier, we are gonna take a couple of the tabs off just with the 10 snips. And make sure you lose those and they're not stuck to the magnet. 
and the opposite side. And we can take that back to the vehicle. We put this back in, I wanted to point out, I did put electrical tape over the exposed wires and connectors, including the back of the capacitor on the connector. And I did remove this little plastic thing. I believe it interferes with the depth of the magnet on the speaker. It sits down there and holds the wires. Just cut that and pull that loose. Gives you a little bit more room down there. Once that's out, you're gonna connect the factory plug into there. Figure out the direction you're gonna drop the speaker in to line up with the bolt holes. And just make sure you tuck everything out of the way. You're a little limited on space down there, so tuck the capacitor and the wiring, and it should sit nicely there. Oh, one thing I forgot to point out, I did put a little uh, weather stripping along the back of the um, speaker, so it provides a softer landing where it sits there and seals it up a little bit. And then just pop the screws back in and the cover, and you're good to go.